Hello viewers, welcome back to the South by Southwest Bicycle Mod channel. Uh, last episode 15, we're on episode 16, we were monkeying around with this steering unit. So it's in the process of being painted. Basically, the steering unit is all done, which mounts onto the bottom of the bike right here and this bottom bracket is almost done uh, it also mounts to the bottom of the frame so I wanted to get those these things out of the way that are hard to, would that would be really hard to paint on the bike let's paint them separately but I'm leaving the uh, steering column and the console mount uh, I'm gonna do those on the bike It'll be a lot easier. I can turn it and paint it. I don't have to, you know, go from one side to the other kind of scenario. And it'll be easier to do. I can tarp off the bike and just have to tape it up around in that area. That's that's about it. So uh, that's where we're at on this thing. I'm not going to bore you too much about the painting. Only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, once this is painted and this is painted, we're going to put it on the bike. So I'll show you what it looks like after it's on the bike and then I'll show you what it looks like after it's all been painted. Well viewers, switching gears, we're not going to be boring you too much with painting this time. Uh, what we plan on doing in this uh, episode is getting the pedal pusher side all hooked up. Uh, the derailleur, the front derailleur, we get the whole pusher side all dialed in and working properly. And then we'll focus on the left side, hopefully in the same episode. And depending on how many problems we have with this. And uh, get this thing all dialed up in and uh, start mounting the motor plate and the motor get that all lined up and then we start uh, mounting all our component parts for the electric motor now I already have mounting points for most of it but I have to make up a new mounting uh, for the speed controller and also for that little air brake what they call an air brake but it's a, actually a breaker switch for the battery so uh, those are two new things I have to figure out where I want to mount them and how. And uh, I got a couple ideas, so we'll kind of wing it when we get to it. But we're definitely going to concentrate on this. This could take up a lot of time because I got to adjust everything in and it takes a lot of patience and time. So I want because this will be one of the hardest things to install is the pedal pusher so I figured let's get that out of the way first. Well viewers I thought I'd just show you this uh, driving hub for the wheel for the rim and uh, this is kind of like my own design. Uh, this is for a go-kart. This is a go-kart axle, it's three quarter inch axle with a 316 keyway. This is just a spare one to have around so it helps me center everything up and there's three holes in the rim itself right there that's a spacer I have on it I don't want to move it because it'll it helps the uh, keep the hub off the spokes so it doesn't rest on the spokes and you just lay it in there like so and that centers it all up now what we just got to do is put on our lock nuts you can't put washers on those by the way and it's a lot easier to bolt it up on the table than it is trying to do it on the bike on your hands and knees. So I'm going to go ahead and bolt this up and theoretically I should be able to pull this out, take the wheel and stick it right on that axle. I went ahead and uh, tightened up the, the bolts, all the bolts are tight. And uh, I pulled it off the uh, that temporary axle, slid it back onto this, located it, and that's about how much I want sticking out. And I went ahead and put the keyway in. That's all in. 
and tightened up the, the set screws. So when the axle goes against the bearing and the housing, that keyway can't go no worse. It's locked in. I can't I can't go out, can't go this way, and can't go that way. So that's all set. So that's that side. Now I need to set, I already uh, bolted that one up. I just need to set set it and put the keyway in it. Well viewers, we got the right side all locked in and on a keyway and it's set the right, right place where it needs to be. And this one's all ready. So now we're ready to install the uh, brake drums and sprocket and the uh, uh, cluster and the brake drums and all that stuff. So, before I begin, I just want to point out these are sealed bearings and they're like press fit. They don't, you don't need a press to press them in, you can use a mallet. Uh, you should be able to start them with your fingers. If you cannot start them with your fingers and they won't go in, then you need to clean the race in there on the inside of the uh, axle housing. Because you don't want to get these too tight because I kind of forced one in over there. And I ended up having to take it out because uh, it was had some paint buildup in there I didn't see. So what happens is when you force them in, when you check the bearings, you should always check the bearings, make sure they don't feel lumpy. And it had a real bad, it had a lot of lumps in it, so I had to take it out and clean it up and put it. In, it it's perfect now, so I just want to point that out. Make sure they're in straight. Uh, other than that, I put a little bit of grease in between the race and the uh, axle housing. Um, on that, there's, there's, there's sealed bearings. You don't need to really do anything else other than that. Make sure the outsides are clean real good. So uh, now we're ready to do the brake system. I'm going to do put on the brake on the right side and also the cluster. And I'm going to put the brake jump on the left side and also the dri uh, driving sprocket. So let's next. Well, I got the right brake drum in and I got it uh, keyed and tightened up. It's where it needs to be. Uh, what I want to show you here is something you should do with your band brakes every time you take them apart. Take some 40 grit paper and arc your drum and what you're trying to do is trying to rough up the drum opposite direction of travel so I'm arcing it down this way and all I'm trying to do is rough it up And now I'm going to um, arch the uh, brake shoe from the top to the bottom. So I'm going to call this the top, I'm going to call this the bottom. And what I'm trying to do is get it any glazing. These are the old brakes, I decided to go from the old brakes to the new ones because these are still in good shape. Now you try to do, like I said, just get up the, from the glazing that's in there, or all of it. That looks pretty good. And the next thing you want to do is you want to take your brake and bend one side end to the other, and the other side end to the other. That'll set the spring on the brake. Now we're going to slide it up and around. I think. And the bottom of the shoe gets pinned with this pin. Right behind here, to the foot. Of course, a little tight there. 
So I'll put that pin in and I'll put the garter key on it. Well, we got both uh, axles done now. We got the uh, pedal pusher. Is that's all locked in? It's all lined up. This is all done, locked in, except for the uh, the sprocket hub for the motor, because we'll have to line that up to the motor. But it's on the keyway. It's ready to be tightened up. So next thing to do is hook up our brake linkage. And adjust our brakes. Well, here's, we got the uh, brake linkage all put on and we got the brakes all adjusted when you uh, push the brake lever fully forward you should get good free wheel without no brake drag you need to set this brake you tighten it up here that's good but yet we got plenty of brake there's not much travel between there and there where we got a lot of brake so we're good so the whole back end is all done these uh driving axles are just waiting for inputs that left side for the motor and this right side for the pedal pusher so we're gonna do the pedal pusher first because it's going to take more time more effort there's a chain down there now i suspect this chain may need to be shortened because it's it's got it's fairly old I got 1300 miles on it so it's probably stretched out a little bit and needs to be shortened a bit because when, when I took it apart the chain was on the derailleur instead of being forward it was kicked way back like this and I had a lot of slack in the chain so something's not right so we'll have to figure this out so I figured we'll get the chain on first and uh, see where we're at and then we'll decide what to do Okay, the other thing I wanted to talk about, some of you quadrisprint owners are out there probably going, what the heck does he got on his brake linkage? I never see it. I don't have that on my bike. Of course you don't. This is, a, I believe, a 3 8 inch inner heater hose tubing. And I believe it's cut to exactly 4 and 5 8 of an inch. A washer here was, I uh, filed it out so it sits on that flange and slides up the flange and what this allows you to do is you tighten this up this stays solid uh, when I ride the bike before I put the electric motor in it uh, I kept hearing these noises like loose spokes it was this they were clanging around because other than that they clang around this holds it solid so you don't have that problem plus it holds it up in the upper position so when you lock the brake in the frontward position so you get free will it holds it and that the other one would just, go back down and start riding, riding on the brake so it serves a lot of good purposes I like it uh, it works well for me I'm glad I did it and I left it on the bike well here's this just an update on the steering unit we got it all mounted well I got it all mounted I put it on by myself it slipped right on prepping it the way I did by stripping the paint on the frame and in the inside and you know I repainted of course but uh, if I would have painted over the orange it would have been worse so anyway because I prepped it properly it just slipped right on it was not uh, but it went on a lot easier and it came off let me put it that way so awesome didn't scratch nothing. Move yours. We got the chain all put on. We got the derailleur all set. We got we got it all cabled up to a selector switch. And I went ahead and put on the since I was putting this on, I put on the uh, second throttle, which is the twist throttle for sidewalk mode. So that way you have the brake here, throttle, and the shifting right here. We just had to go with the index. I got this all calibrated. It shifts perfectly. So all the shifting's working real well in the back. Unfortunately, I'm unable to hook up the derailleur in the front because this is still in the process of being painted, the console bar, and it mounts right here. Now, I did get a new shifter for it with a new cable, so it'll make it a lot easier to, because this has to come up from the bottom, and it was a real pain in the butt to get it off, let alone putting it together, so. Hopefully it'll go together easier. 
with the new cable. So, um, in any event, that's where we're at on this well, side. I thought I'd take a little bit of time to explain to you about the electric motor for this bike. But before I do, I need to do this illegal thing. It's called a disclaimer statement. So let's get that out of the way. I hope you like my little three stooge. So don't be a stooge. Don't go on off on the deep end with this thing and make something that's, uh, you know, a suicide machine. You go out there and get yourself killed on it, then you want to sue somebody. Well, you're not going to be able to sue somebody, but your family might. So I just want to put a disclaimer statement here. Now, number one, you want to make sure if you have a Quadra Sprint and you want to make sure that the warranty has expired. If your warranty is still good, I'd suggest you do this after the warranty is expired. Then uh, you don't have no no issues with uh, quadricycles or uh, Vera bike quadricycles. That is. So I'm going to give you tips. Uh, number one, reason why I went with the scooter motor. Reason one, expense. Uh, for the same amount of watt, wattage I'm going to be getting out of the system I'm putting into it would cost me close to $3,000 just for the bicycle kit to match what I'm putting into it now. And the price on that will probably come in around 800 bucks. So big price difference. So <clears throat> now the reason why we didn't go with the bicycle conversion kit, number one, I don't like the idea of losing my three gears up here. So if you want to do a mid-drive system, you lose your three gears. And um, knowing that it wouldn't work anyway because this bar here needs to come up. So the motor can come up and be mounted. So it wouldn't work without having to do major frame modifications. So otherwise, I'm not just adding to the, to the frame. I'm taking away and changing it. And that, I don't want to be doing that. So that was out. And you're not going to find a hub motor that will fit this axle. Unless you want to reinvent the whole axle system. Which may mean you may need to change your axle housing. The whole thing. I mean, you're talking big bucks. Just to do a bicycle conversion. So you could have that pedal assist. I don't use the pedal assist that much. I ride my Rad Rover and I hardly ever use it. Uh, I just pedal and kind of use the throttle. So that's what this system is all about. The first thing you want to do is you want to pick out a motor kit. Now they have a lot of different scooter motor kits. They go anywhere from a 250 watt 20 volt, 24 volt system all the way up to like 62 uh, volt with uh, 3000 watt motor systems so depends on where you want to be I'm the first motor I put on this was a thousand watt brush motor and uh, with that T8F, but most of them are gonna, all these motor kits are going to, electric motor kits are going to have the T8F sprocket on the motor. So that makes it kind of easy. In some ways and in other ways, it makes it a little difficult. And I'll explain that a little later. But figure out your motor kit. And I went with 1,000. Now I'm going to upgrade to a 1,800 watt brushless motor with forward and reverse. So this way... I can back up and go forward with it. And I know the 1,000 watt motor got me up to about 27 miles an hour. And I'm thinking this motor should get me up about the same amount or uh, about the same amount because I add a lot of weight. I added this to the frame and uh, I'm adding some lights and some other things. So it's gonna add some more weight to it. So I figured 1800 watt 
motor is going to be perfect, brushless, for reverse. It also has a 32 amp controller. I would suggest that you get a controller no less than 25 amps. 30, anything higher than 25 is, is acceptable, but I wouldn't use anything less than 25 amps. Um, the next thing that's most important is the battery. In fact, this is probably the most expensive part that you're going to buy for your whole motor kit is the battery. Now I spent $400 for this complete battery system, but it's worth it. You get the battery cage, you get the battery, you get the uh, charger for it, and a pigtail that plugs into the back. Um, this is a uh, 48 volt, 15 amp hour battery. And I would recommend that you don't get anything less than 12 amp hours, but 15 seems to be pretty good for this bike. It pushes it along pretty well. The lower the amp hours, the weaker the battery is. It's not going to deliver you on performance. It's going to take longer to charge. It's not going to give you the distance where a good amp hour battery will give you the distance, give you the power, and uh, give you the performance that you expect out of it, distance wise and all that. Now this was cage is meant for a bicycle. It had tubes that came down. I cut all the tubes off of it, left the cage intact. I cut it off in the front here because that little piece that came up like that, I took that out. And uh, it mounts on the frame right here, right there. That's where it mounts and the battery mounts right in there and it works perfectly. So you get a battery, I suggest a LIFO battery, a good battery, spend the money on a good battery and spend the money on a fairly decent motor kit. Now most all the motor kits that you're going to buy, like I said, you can get them anywhere from 250 watt to 3000 watt motor kits. Uh, I'm at 1800, 48 volt. Uh, 1800 watt motor with a uh, 1800 watt uh, 32 amp controller with a 48 volt um, 15 amp hour battery so that's going to be a perfect match for this bike so once you uh, figured out your battery and your motor that, that takes care of the electronics part and then you'll need a thumb throttle or a twist throttle, whatever you decide to use. Your twist throttle, you can put it there, put it up here, or, or a thumb throttle. I suggest you put a thumb throttle on the steering wheel. It's worth the extra time and, uh, and uh, effort. That way you can keep both hands on the bike where you're doing high speeds down the road. Because when this thing hits a bump, it kind of wants to go where it wants to go. But if you have both hands on the wheel, you can kind of keep it where it needs to be. Because wherever that goes, the back end follows. So, so anyway, that, um, that's pretty much it for the electronics part of it. Now, the next part of it is the actual driving system for, for the motor. Because the stock... Uh, axle that's on your quadra will not work. You have to make up your own driving axle. And I'll explain. Well, that viewers, I'll take a few minutes to explain this driving axle because I kind of went through this real fast. This is the driving axle for the electric motor. And I just want to explain it. So, just in case someone of you out there that have a quadra sprint and you want to take it to this level with the scooter motor, this is what you'll need to do. First thing is you'll have to buy an axle from Amazon that's 18 inches long, that's 3 quarter inch, with a 3 16 inch slot all the way through it. So that way you don't have to worry about keyway locations. Okay, the other thing you need, you'll, you'll need to buy, you'll need to buy, I would recommend you buy three of these. Keep one handy just in case you mess one up, you have another one available. Uh, these are go-kart uh, driving 
uh, driving sprockets to, for you mount a sprocket on it or you can mount a brake drum on it or you can mount it to a wheel it, they're pretty versatile it's just a driving hub basically so that's three six inch inch three quarter inch axle and that's what we have here I have one here this one came with the bike that's the original for the brake drum it's the same exact thing except for they they bolted on a brake drum to it I think it's a four inch four and a half inch and this here is another one now these two that are painted this one and this one I had to drill the holes through the hub to adapt to the wheel so it can be a wheel driving hub which it is it's on a 3 16th keyway these holes are very difficult to drill make sure that they're perfectly lined up because if you get that wrong you can see there's very little room in there for the nut for the top of the uh, bolt and that's why I went with got away from the hex bolts and I went with an allen an allen bolt this is a quarter inch uh, stainless steel allen bolt with lock nuts on the back side so that way you don't have to worry about washers and then this one, unfortunately, the TAF sprocket holes didn't match up to any of the holes on the go-kart sprocket. So what I did is I ended up drilling new holes in the sprocket. You don't want to be drilling into the hub, drill into the sprocket. So find the four holes that most likely fit to the to the sprocket on the back side here as you can see and I drilled holes into the sprocket that way if it's off a little bit you can file on those holes on the sprocket do not file it on this file on the sprocket so you can move it around a little bit to get it on center that's basically what I did I had an indicator so I was able to indicate it this is within Oh, I'd say close to a thousandths of an inch, one thousandths TIR. So what I'm trying to say is it wouldn't hop more than a thousandths of an inch up, which is good. So those are the two difficult things, is drilling these holes into the sprocket and drilling the holes into the hubs. This hub also will need a spacer in between the wheel bearing and of the hub and the hub itself so it doesn't rest on the spokes other than that this would be on the spokes and bending the spokes we don't want that and I'll, so what i'll do is i'll leave you in the description box down below where to get all these parts and all the parts you'll need you'll need to get one more of these a colic you also will need to get some uh, 3 16 keyway and cut them to desirable size and just to let you know do not put this and the brake hub on a shared keyway. Make sure you have separate keyways for each one of these. Because I put it on a shared keyway and it was a bad idea because we got opposing forces. One go this way to get going, and another one going this way to stop it. And what was happening was making the keyway wiggle and it was flying out. So I put it on separate keyways and I had any problems. Plus, I put this collet on also to hold it all together. So I'll leave air all the parts down in the description box below and you can review those. Uh, the 18 inch axle is perfect, that way you don't have to cut one. And you can get all the, the only thing you'll have to do is like I said, drill part, drill holes and you'll have to uh, do a little special work on that washer a little bit, grind it down so it fits inside the hub. But other than that, it works really well work great on my trial run and so now I'm taking it to the second level going with the bigger well, motor. Here's, we got the console bar painted it needs a little TLC yet no biggie uh, we're getting ready to tape this all up for the uh, steering column get that painted up in the yellow we got the motor plate done uh, so we're going to be mounting on down the motor plate and uh, hooking up our front derailleur and 
finish dialing this in and I'll show you how all that's adjusted from scratch so that way you'll know how to do it but unfortunately unfortunately I've run out of time so if you haven't subscribed subscribe and don't forget to mash that notification bell and if you are a subscriber and you haven't mashed that notification bell you probably want to do that so you can keep up with this project uh, if you have any comments concerns questions or criticism use that comment section down below be more than happy to look at those until next time like i always say if i can do it you can do it better